We're here in San Angelo, Texas, in front of the Tom Green County Courthouse to introduce Episode 4 of the Texas Generals, presented by the Texas Division of the Sons of Confederate Veterans. Hi, I'm Johnny Anderson, Chief Research Officer of the Civil War Project and member of the Sons of Confederate Veterans. Episode 4 profiles the life and career of, you guessed it, Brigadier General Thomas Green. Where I'm standing here once stood a memorial to General Green, but sadly that memorial has been removed. Nevertheless, that doesn't diminish the fact that Tom Green was a true Texas hero who fought for Texas independence and died fighting for what he believed in. I hope you enjoy this episode of the Texas Generals. If you do, please remember to give us a thumbs up and subscribe to our channel. Brigadier General Thomas Jefferson Green's story begins in Amelia County, Virginia, on June 8, 1814, where he was born to Nathan and Mary Field Green. When Thomas was three years old in 1817, the family moved to Franklin County, Tennessee. He attended Jackson College in Tennessee and Princeton College in Kentucky before he received his degree from the University of Tennessee at Knoxville in 1834. He then studied law with his father, who was a prominent judge on the Tennessee Supreme Court. When the Texas Revolution began, Green left Tennessee to join the rebel volunteers. He arrived in Nacogdoches, Texas in December of 1835 and enlisted in Isaac N. Moreland's company on January the 14, 1836. During the Battle of San Jacinto on April the 21st, Green helped operate the famed Twin Sisters Cannons, the only artillery present in Sam Houston's army. A few days after the decisive victory, Houston rewarded Green with a commission as lieutenant. In early May, he was promoted to major and assigned as the aide-de-camp to General Thomas J. Rusk. With hostilities over, though, Green resigned on May the 30th and returned to Tennessee to resume studying law. In 1837, the legislature of the New Republic of Texas granted large tracts of land to leading veterans of the Revolution, including Thomas Green. That motivated Green to move back to Texas, and he settled in Fayette County, and he became the county surveyor at LaGrange. That same year, fellow San Jacinto veteran William W. Gant nominated Green for the position of engrossing clerk for the Texas House of Representatives. He was subsequently elected and held office until 1839 when he represented Fayette County in the House of Representatives in the 4th Texas Congress. After a single term, though, he chose not to run again and resumed his clerkship. During the 6th and 8th Texas Congresses, he served as Secretary of the Senate. From 1841 to 1861, he was clerk to the Texas Supreme Court in both the Republic and the subsequent U.S. state. Between legislative and court sessions, Green served in military campaigns against the Indians and Mexico. In the fall of 1840, he joined John H. Moore in an expedition up the Colorado River against the Comanches. And in the fall of 1842, he served as Inspector General for the ill-conceived Somerville Expedition after Mexican General Adrian Wohl's incursion into San Antonio. When the United States went to war with Mexico, Green recruited a company of Texas Rangers in LaGrange as part of the 1st Texas Regiment of Mounted Riflemen. Serving as the cavalry arm of Zachary Taylor's force, the Rangers worked as scouts and anti-guerrilla forces. During the Battle of Monterey in 1846, the Rangers spent three days fighting through the city streets, and outside of Veracruz, they drove off a force of 200 Mexican cavalry without losing a man. After returning home from the Mexican-American War, Green married Mary Wallace Chalmers, the daughter of John G. Chalmers, on January the 31st, 1847. They had seven children, six daughters, and one son. After Texas seceded from the Union in early 1861, Green was elected colonel of the 5th Texas Cavalry, which was part of the brigade led by Brigadier General Henry H. Sibley. The 5th Texas joined the invasion of the New Mexico Territory in 1862. There, Green led a Confederate victory at the Battle of Valverde in February. After a difficult retreat into Texas, the 5th Texas Cavalry moved to Galveston, which had just fallen to the Union. Green led his men aboard the river steamer Bayou City, 
one of the Confederate Navy's cotton clads, named for their use of cotton bales for armor in the absence of iron. The U.S. steamer Harriet Lane, along with several other Union ships, had taken up station in Galveston Harbor. The Bayou City and the C.S. Neptune sailed from Morgan's Point in an effort to surprise Union forces with a combined land and sea assault. The ships were spotted, though, and the surprise lost. The Neptune was sunk when she tried to ram the Lane, but Green and the men of the Bayou City boarded and seized the Federal ship. Galveston was recaptured and remained in Confederate hands for the rest of the war. In 1863, Green commanded the 1st Cavalry Brigade in Richard Taylor's division in Louisiana. The brigade fought in four engagements in Louisiana, the Bayou Tesh Campaign, Coke's Plantation, Sterling's Plantation, and the battle at Bayou Barbeau. In four victories, Green's men inflicted about 3,000 casualties and suffered only 600 losses. Green was subsequently assigned command of the Cavalry Division of the Trans-Mississippi Department. During the Red River Campaign, Green commanded a brigade of Texas Cavalry in the division of Brigadier General John S. Marmaduke. In April 1864, he led successful attacks against Major General Nathaniel Banks at the Battle of Mansfield and against Major General William H. Emory at the Battle of Pleasant Hill. After General Banks' defeat on land, Union Admiral David Dixon Porter's fleet began to withdraw as well along the Red River. Green was ordered to intercept the fleet at Blair's Landing. Getting into a fight with the timber-clad Lexington and the Monitor Osage, Green was wounded by cannon fire and died at the Blair Plantation. Historian John D. Winters in the Civil War in Louisiana quotes a Texas soldier who fought under Green. He was a man who, when out of whiskey, was a mild-mannered gentleman but when in a good supply of old burst head was all fight. Well fortified with Louisiana rum, Green with a yell told his men that he was going to show them how to fight. The charge against the gunboats was made on horseback. Green was killed well in advance, a cannon shot taking off the top of his head. Drunk or sober, foolish or not, in waging the attack, Green was a valuable man and General Taylor lamented him. For his gallantry, Green was one of only four Texas Confederate veterans awarded the Confederate Medal of Honor. Brigadier General Thomas Green died on April 12, 1864. He's buried in the family plot at the Oakwood Cemetery in Austin, Texas.